Um, and that was a, a big thing. Um, growing up in uh, Burbank, we were in like the movie industry world, um, like all our friends were working in it. And where we really got started was uh, we worked on the Batmobile. What's going on guys? Aaron here with uh, LSK Industry Podcast. Today we're going to be uh, interviewing ourselves. <laughs> And uh, we're going to kind of let everyone know, um, you know, the history of LSK and and uh, where it started at and, um, you know, how we got to what we're doing right now. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, Van here um, and then I'm Aaron, as I've already introduced myself. But um, as far as, as LSK goes, we started this company, I think it's been almost 11 years. Almost, right? yeah. September. Yeah, yeah. So 11 years. Um, we started this in my mom's garage. Actually, before me, before it was even a business, it started in his mom's garage. <laughs> um, and that was before I was even around. I was still in, in high school. And uh, it started as uh, Lamer Street Creations, which is the what LSK is abbreviation for. And uh, yeah, you, I mean, you could tell us more about the the, the good old Lamer Street oh, in Burbank. God. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, just, we just screwed around for a while. I mean, I learned uh, everything I know from freaking just building stuff. So, you know, we built Baja Bugs, a few Rangers, uh, bicycles, <laughs> I don't know, whatever, whatever we felt like doing. And then, uh, and then Aaron came in and, uh, wanted to build his Dodge. Yeah. Yeah. So I had a, I had a Dodge Dakota in high school that I thought was the coolest thing. And, and, uh, <laughs> still do, <laughs> still do. Um, but that, that Dodge, um, I, you know, had it in my, uh, in my garage and, uh, Wanted to build a long travel kit for it, and uh, when I was in uh, college, um, I uh, designed it when I was on the Baja team and was getting used to learning SolidWorks and getting my feet wet with that, and uh, designed this overly complicated, super thick, over-ribbed uh, lower control arm and upper arms, and uh, had them water jetted, and uh, put them all together, was super stoked about it, and then uh, Van was the guy that I got introduced to through our, uh, our good buddy Bob that we used to be pretty close with, and uh, he uh, connected us, and um, you know, ever since we worked on that project, it, it kind of got things kind of rolling. I have no idea how we got from that to this, but yeah, it's pretty you know, impressive. Yeah. But. We've definitely, uh, made some, made some moves since then. Um, as far as that, that truck goes is it was really just like the light under, you know, our ass to that we could build something, um, from a computer. And I feel like 11 years ago, that was kind of like, not necessarily the start, but it was like when everyone was pretty hot and interested in, in learning SOLIDWORKS and, and making things that weren't just, you know, hand fabbed, hand notched. And, uh, you know, we really wanted to be the ones that were a digital um, design company that that made some, you know, next level products. And at the time when we were designing this stuff, like we look back on our stuff now and we're like, what the hell were we thinking? Like this is like we look at old, like really old products that we don't even make anymore. We're like, what what were we thinking? We thought this was like, you know, hot shit. And now we look back and we're like, we're crazy. We, we didn't know what we were doing. But we, uh, it still got us, um, you know, rolling and we learned, we learned from all those earlier designs. Um, but just, just working in the, in the backyard, um, we did a couple, couple trucks. We did like a Silverado, a four wheel drive Silverado. Um, we did, uh, just random stuff, just anything we can get our hands Titans. on. We were building Titans, Rangers. Um, and that was a, a big thing. Um, growing up in uh, Burbank, we were in like the movie industry world. Um, like all our friends were working in it. And where we really got started was uh, we worked on the Batmobile and we started working on it on a, that project, not even knowing that we were going to be working on it. Just all of a sudden we were. Actually, we went in to build material handling shelves. We did. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then and then Johnny Kaiser was the lead on it and he liked us, I guess, and uh, wanted us to help with the design of the chassis and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. They realized they're like, oh, these guys know CAD. So yeah. we were, we had a, we had a plasma table in Aaron's mom's garage. garage. Yeah. Yeah. And it moved <laughs> over to the, to, to vehicle effects, to vehicle effects for, for building the Batmobile. Yep. Yeah. So, um, and Van was, uh, had a big influence in all the chassis work on that and design. Yeah. Yeah. Me and, me and Johnny, it, right? Kaiser, yeah, Johnny yeah. Miller. Yeah. Right. So the, the, the two of them and, or the three of them working on that and, uh, uh, kind of got us the ability to you know, kickstart and get things rolling. And that's when we were kind of rolling into a GM truck center, right? Yeah, we ended up, well, at kind of the same time we got a, we rented a shop from my old boss at GM truck center in Burbank. Uh, and 
I don't know. We rented like what was it, five or six thousand square feet. Oh no! Before that, we just had the corner. Oh yeah, like yeah, it we was were, the size <laughs> of this room. Yeah, like, yeah it was just like, the corner. It, we had it, one stall. He yeah, had yeah. this like twenty thousand square foot building. Yeah, and we had like. 500 feet of, square feet of it in yeah. the corner. We yeah. had a plaza table, a, an old work table. An old craftsman lathe. Yeah, some, yeah, like a toolbox, and that yeah. was it. And yeah. we did that. We did that for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, and then we were like, oh, we need to upgrade. And he had a downstairs that was all empty. It was like an old building with, like, the windows blown out. Yeah, and that's yeah. kind of what we did for yeah, the next no, year. No heater. Actually, we were running an extension cord from we were. Uh, upstairs to there. And yeah. we were all running off of one 110 and then one 220 yep, yeah. extension cord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off. So everything was run off extension cords. There's yeah. no power down yeah. there. Um, this is right, like right across the street from like the Burbank Mall. It's crazy. Yeah. Like yeah. the locate, the location was cool, but the building was super old, like yeah. original. Um, so we outgrew that extremely quickly. We had like you know seven trucks on jack stands all lined up. Um, definitely not a fun uh, thing to do when you're working like seven days a week, not making much money. So that was kind of where we started. Like like every shop does, it's kind of like you do it because you're into it and you want to build cool shit, you know. Um, so. After that, uh, once we started being like, hey, we're going to make this, uh, you know, a real thing. Like, we're not just going to rent from your old boss. Um, we went to uh, San Dimas. I was going to school still at, at Cal Poly for mechanical engineering. And uh, we went out there and we uh, um, rented a place that was right at the top of the 57, um, which was in San Dimas, which was a cool location. And uh, it was a small shop. I think it was how many square feet? 1,800 or something 18, like that. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. But it was cool. And, yeah, we, uh, and we set it up and... It was like legit. We had a tiny office. Yeah. We had, it was like real, like a real shop. Like we had yeah. our own alarm system. Yeah. We were stoked about it. Yeah. Oh you yeah. Know? It was big, big step. Yeah. And uh, I, when we first moved in there, Van was still working on the Batmobile, and uh, I was setting it up, and we were just kind of like trying to make all the dots connect. And at that time, him and I were designing everything. And you know, when he, when, when uh, uh, we were really just like one employer, two employees at that time. Yeah. I mean, we were like, well, there we was, brought, and we brought who do we bring on first? Kevin. It was Kevin, and, and then was it Anthony? Anthony and Jacob and Jacob, Jacob yeah. Tempe. Yeah. yeah. So we, uh, um, they and they were awesome. I mean, yeah. they really All three are of like those guys. Like big they were part helped of this us, company. Yeah. Helped us make yeah. like make it real. Yep. You know. Yeah, for sure. And uh, but everyone was wearing a million hats. Yep. And uh, like I'd have my computer set up, welding, and trying to answer phones all the same time, and it worked ish. You know, yeah. but we were working every day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, no one can sustain that forever <laughs> until you get burnt out. Yep. Um, but we did, I think we were in that shop for three years. Yep. So three years, and then we needed more space, um, and we moved to a shop in, uh, in El Monte. Mm -hmm. And El Monte was cool. It was about, I think it was like 7,000 square feet or 8,000? Yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah, somewhere in there. We had like an upstairs office. Um, we were so excited because we had like this small conference room with like a pool table yeah, that we, we were, never used. Like yeah. the dogs like chewed the pockets <laughs> off the corner. And uh, at that point we still had like three trucks on jack stands we were working on. And um, we were building kits. We got more in the kit development then. And during that period um, is when we were like, hey, like we're having, like we need to bring manufacturing in house. And and that's when like Cal West, which is, is, is a separate company from LSK, but we decided, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna build our own laser. Yep. So we literally in the actually no this happened in the San Dimas this yeah, is yeah. before we yeah, even yeah. went to El Monte we literally met some laser guy up in I think it was like North Dakota or mm -hmm. something and, oh, no Michigan mm -hmm. and he was awesome like super awesome he just like believed in us and we we're like we want to build a laser because at the time it was like really hard to get these machines and we bought the laser and we built it and it was it was pretty badass like. We were the, shooting. The, we have videos of like shooting flames off. Oh of yeah. It. Well, the first <laughs> the first laser was a flat plate laser, yeah. and it had a tube laser on the side of it. Right. So we were, and that so in house in our eighteen hundred square foot shop, we were doing plate laser, tube, and tube laser. Bay. Yeah. And we were doing. Uh, we had a press brake. Yep. We had that big sketchy flywheel style press brake. Yep. But it worked awesome actually. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then we had. Uh, what else did we? Well, oh, we had we just had a JD square bender, right? Yeah, just JD square bender. But yeah. we had it like all kind of figured out. We're yeah. like, we could cut something and line it up and yeah. bend it, and we had it like all correlated to the computer. It was cool. It's like yeah. what we could do for the budget we had, which was low. Yeah. Um, when we had that that press break, like um, it was like a game changer. We had this flywheel press break where you just stomp on it and we went like, Ch -ch -ch, and it was kind of like you kind of got the right angle. It wasn't great. And then we went um, to a local place and we found this like old Cincinnati that. All the guts were there, but the electronics were missing. So we were like, screw it. It's cheap. Well, we know automation stuff. Like, 
we could go into it and do it. And we actually did. We ran that for a while. Yeah. It actually worked pretty darn good. Actually, it's still running. It's still running. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually, yeah. I, I, uh, it's not it, here. But not here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but we sold that when we got some new equipment later on. Um, but as far as the uh, the the ability to be in an eighteen hundred square foot shop and have laser stuff, we were like, oh man, we were like ahead of the game. Like we can we can cut stuff on demand, and it was great. So um, that was kind of like the beginning of like the Cal West stuff, like unofficially. And uh, once we got in El Monte, that's when we actually started Cal West, which is a manufacturing division that makes parts for everything from obviously off road to construction, the aerospace, like anything that we could really get our hands on. And uh, we kept LSK separated, so we had our own product line, and and uh, we still do that to to this day. We we have actually two separate buildings, one LSK and one Cal West, which is which is pretty cool. We're we're excited about that. Um, but when we moved into El Monte, you know that was seven eight thousand square feet. We had an office, and we realized like, hey, we're in this like bigger building, and for some reason we we're just getting bigger work from it, you know. And uh, we did that. We did a bit, bunch of big projects for like New York City and. Uh, more movie projects. We did uh, Ford Fast versus Furious. Ferrari. Ford did, versus Ferrari. Yeah. yeah, Fast and Furious. We did a bunch of car, bunch of cars and projects for that. Um, we did a big uh, uh, Star Wars project, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, so we we definitely did a lot in that El Monte shop. El Monte shop. That yeah. was for still, sure. Still working like seven yeah, seven yeah. days a week. Eight days a week. Yeah, eight days a week. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, after El Monte. Um, we moved, we were like, God, we need more space. Like we just, we were like walking over each other. And I think it was only like six or seven of us at that time. Right. Yeah. And we were like, we need more space. So, you know, being in the middle of LA, it was like, there's not really much you can get for your buck on uh, space. And we started looking at further out like Rancho, Ontario, Fontana area. And right across from the speedway, um, the AAA racetrack, we found a, a really cool warehouse. And it was just literally like this steel box. You know, like it was a steel building, 16,000 square feet. And it was like, when we walked in there, it was like, this is freaking We're huge. never going to fill this up. Never going to fill it this up. This is more yeah. space than we'll ever need. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, we were yeah. like, oh, this is just like a, a money-making box. Yeah. Like, this is going to be this is gonna be great. Like, we can expand, get everything, like, dialed in. And we did that. We we filled that thing up. And we had, we, that's where we actually had, like, designated departments. We had our plate laser department, plate bending, tube bending, tube cutting, um, we had the whole nine yards, and uh, we had a pretty good welding area with chassis tables and a, and a shipping area. It was like a mini, like, manufacturing company. Yeah, mini version of, of what we are now. Yeah, mm. so yeah. it was it was uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, as far as, like, like uh, you know, from where where we were at that point, we were like, you know, what is what is the next move? Like, everyone wants to kind of figure out, like, you know, what's next? And you just keep buying equipment as demand goes on. And, and, uh, during, uh, COVID we were like, Oh, when COVID first started, we we're like, I don't know if business is going to go up or down and, or if the world's going to end. Yeah. We yeah. had no, we had no <laughs> idea, but during that time we got approached about a property that was for sale down the street. And we were like, you know what? Like if there's a time to do it, it's right now. Like, like people are trying to dump properties. Like they have no idea right in the beginning of COVID. I mean, I think it was like March when we made this decision, like right in the heart of the, like, yeah, right when, yeah. yeah, we were like, if we're going to do it, let's do it now. Like yeah. everything's super cheap. So yeah. we got a contractor on board and we, we found a, a, a property and uh, they were, everyone was so willing just to sell everything so cheap. And uh, it took all of COVID to build our current buildings that we're in. Um, and we're, we're super excited about it. like it's something that was our own and we knew that we needed to go into something that we could grow into and, you know, have something that um, had value to us and and make it a home for for work. And uh, and we did that. We built two buildings on a property that had an old dentist office that was never finished and an abandoned house. So Crack we, house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. And uh, so now we're on the other side of the racetrack. You can actually see see the stands from our backyard. And uh we uh, filled it up, so we have we have two buildings. We have LSK on one side, um, which is just filled with all inventory, shipping, packaging, R and D, and all of our product assembly. And on the other side, we have Cal West. And uh, essentially, the way you know we structure our business is Cal West and LSK really have no you know um, integration to each other. LSK is a customer of Cal West, and that's and that's how we treat it. And uh, it's really important that we do that. Um, and we uh, you know we're excited about how we've got kind of things rolling. And on the Cal West side. Um, we have someone that's in charge of just making sure everything is rolling really well and and uh, and making sure we have, you know, 
the right things in place to make good product, and uh, and we do that. Now we're rolling into ISO certification yeah, for yeah. CalWest. Yeah, so, so so right now, you know, we did um, something I didn't talk about, but a couple of years ago we got into um, aerospace robotics, and what I mean by that is we were focusing on aerospace companies and helping them manufacture things such as fasteners and, and uh, you know, grommets or clamps or things like that, something in high volume, and we were doing robotic projects that would – essentially make this these processes faster for them and and with that said it kind of got us connections right now we're working on is is to get into aerospace manufacturing on the cal west side where we uh um, we're working on our iso 9100 um, and that gives us the ability to make uh, flight gear or things that go on airplanes and uh, what's cool about this is it's not just about having the ability to do and quote those jobs it's it's our entire facility over the last couple of months has just started like fully developing to where there's these quality checks and processes that we never thought were important before, but now we're like, wow, like, like there's like a system in place and there's a structure and the quality has gone amazing. And just our ability to produce stuff has just been, I mean, tenfold better. I yeah, mean, just, just exponential growth. Yeah. Yeah. So like, it's like it, we should have looked in the 9100, even when we weren't interested in the aerospace stuff. It's just like the structure it puts into your business is just in, insane. And it's a lot of work. I mean, we're implementing a, a whole new ERP system right now. And and uh, yeah. And, and what's cool about that is, you know, Cal West obviously makes the products for LSK. And and uh, so if Cal West products quality is going up, then then, uh, you know, we can only expect superior products for LSK, which is really cool. Um, as far as like, you know, kind of looking back on like LSK in general, when we first got into like Cal West stuff, like LSK kind of became the, like, it wasn't as important. And I'm not saying that it wasn't our passion, but it just became like, it wasn't what we were thinking about we, every second of the day. We needed to be able to afford the, the payment on yeah. the property. Yeah. 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 So and, like Cal West, yeah. Cal West is like our, you know, paying the bills at the time. And LSK was like the fun, the fun thing that we, you know. We're yeah, trying we're, to, we, we've always loved off roads. So. Yeah, yeah. So, but now, like, now we're all about, you know, since we moved in this building, it gave us a new, you know, look on it. And, well, now, and I think our efficiency has gotten to the point with LSK where we can, you know, we can make, you know, profit margins that we want to because we're following these good processes. From, yeah. So it's, and it's scalable because we have more engineers on staff. It, it's, it's been, it's been really fun the last couple months. It has. Yeah. It has. Like, it's cool to, like, when we were doing LSK on a budget, it was hard. But now that we have, um, you know, more funds backing us to, you know, just from everything that's going on between Cal West and LSK, it's easier to uh, make this happen. And, like, we get to spend time on product development, not worrying about just getting it out the door to, to make a customer happy, but instead making the product product awesome because we want it to be awesome. Well, you proof it out yourself yeah. on your own vehicles. And then you, you know, once you go into production, you run quantity 10 or quantity 50, you know, and then it becomes cost effective to actually make a profit on, you know, off-road components. Yeah. Know? Whereas if you're just building one long travel kit. Right. I mean, that's, I mean, that's how it was yeah, like yeah, the yeah. first several years. Yeah. It was like, oh, we got to order we, for this. It's like, okay, we'll have it ready for you in five weeks. And, yeah. and we cut out the kit. And Aaron and would walk it. over to the laser table or yeah. cut it out. And, yeah. And, yeah. and we put it together. But yeah. it's, it's different now. It's yeah. like, hey, we're going to make one of these. We're going to put it on. We usually like try to do R&D on like our friend's cars or and ours, uh, yeah. our, ours cars because yeah. we want to go test it and beat on it. And like all the UTV stuff, I think all of our UTV products are either on our friends or ours and we, we put it through hell. Yeah. I mean, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, we've just introduced the X travel line and, uh, you know, I, I was uh, amazed by it and I want to be like, you know, if I'm going to, if we're going to, you know, sell something and be proud of it, like I want to understand what it's all about. And like, now I'm a believer because it's on mine and I've tried to break it and I can't break it. So I feel confident. You can break everyone else's parts. Though. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but as far as like, yeah, breaking other people's parts. Yeah. But, but knowing that like we're putting our stuff through abuse and it's holding up to what we do to it and race with it and, you know, go enjoy it, do what people would actually do with our products and they're, and they're living and they're doing great. Um, that just gives us excitement that what we're doing is, is good. Yeah. You know, and then also honorable mention, uh, this guy, Doug has just been kicking ass. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so a big thing for us is like, um, uh, media has never been uh, a huge focus for us. We've always been kind of on and off with it. And, uh, you know, you know, all about your, any business is like, how do you get the word out there that you're, you're, you're trying to make something that's, that's great for the world and what people want. And 
we brought on uh, Doug, who's uh, who's behind the camera right now. Hey, Doug. What's up? And uh, so Doug has been like just a complete change to this business and uh, the drive, just the the overall uh, um, you know need to make something badass. Like he's the one pushing us to to kick ass and do a good job, and we uh, we appreciate you, Doug. So um, we uh, um, are gonna you know all the plans that we have you know. Previous to this year, we may have come out with one or two products over a course of like two or three years. I think this year we've come out with almost 40 different products and we've proven the hell out of them. Yeah. And we're proud of them. Like yeah, they are cool products. Yeah. We skipped a lot of things in the past that we're kicking ourselves for just getting into it now. We've come out, we're going to be coming out with new Silverado stuff, 19 up Silverado stuff. We've got Raptor stuff, which I can't believe we haven't touched till now. Yeah, uh, we're actually out there putting the Raptor bed cage kit in right now, which is pretty cool. Yep. Um, and then we've got plans for Bronco stuff, uh, specifically talking uh, currently about X Travel, which is pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, and all the miscellaneous accessories that go along with that. And uh, no, we're 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 pushing. We've completed, I think, the entire UTV lineup. Um, we have 14 different cages. Uh, 14 different windshield kits. We have a door package for all the different cars, not the YXZ stuff yet, um, like Pro R, Turbo R. XP, We're working yeah. on getting welded cages. Yeah, um, yeah. Actually, that's a new one. We avoided the whole welded cage thing forever, and now all of a sudden, in one of our meetings, we go, "Hey, let's weld some cages together." Yeah. Yeah, and so now we're we're talking about doing that. Actually, it's in motion right now, where because we just get so many phone calls, of people going, "Hey, I love your roll yourself cage, but do you have one that's welded?" and and uh, so now we're like, you know what? Maybe yeah, we, it's time to give it a shot and see what the hell happens. So yeah. that's what we're we're playing, not playing with now, but we're proofing out now. We just we just built an XP one thousand four C cage. That's a really popular cage for us, and um, we took it off and scanned it, designed the fixture for it, a modular fixture, and uh, we're going to go through the the paces, weld one up, test it on another car, make sure it's perfect before we ship it out into the world. And uh, so that's like a whole new business entity in itself. And then uh, another big thing that we've been pushing pretty hard just by demand is the the trailer stuff. Like we came out with a, a tube chassis trailer. This so th there's a story behind this. This tube chassis trailer is uh, we uh, go out to the races. So I race uh, District 38 down in the uh, San Diego area, and uh, all the all the cars. Not all. I shouldn't say all, but a lot of people have these beautiful cars. Like they just have so much money. These UTVs. And uh, they come on trailers that are just like barely hanging on. And it's funny, you go out to the desert and you see the same thing. You're like, this beautiful car is being loaded on a trailer that's like missing half of the plank planks on the on the deck, you know? Or, Angle iron. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, yeah. just barely hanging on. So it's like, you know what? Why don't we build a badass tube, tube chassis trailer? And so I made a single UTV trailer and we, we built it and uh, had it power coded blue. And uh, we took it right when it was finished. We literally put it together in the parking lot of the power coder. And we drove out to the Arizona where we went to our first expo, which was, uh, what was it called? The Dirt Expo? Yeah, Dirt Expo in Arizona. And uh, um, it was like the main attraction. We're like, holy cow, this yeah. thing is crazy. Like everyone was like, oh, can I take home the one that's built here? And so we came out with like a welded yourself kit for it. And um, long story short, everyone really wants it welded. <laughs> so yeah. that's what we're trying to figure out uh, now. And and get you know the DMV license for us to be able to, to license these things, and we're, and we're in the process of that. But we have um, what's crazy is we posted this thing on on Facebook, and it was just within like an hour. I think it had 450 comments on it, and it was just like this good, trailer. Good and bad. Yeah, yeah, good and bad. They're like, oh, I could convert my boat trailer, or can you put gravel on it? And we were like, no, it's just a fancy trailer. Like yeah. it may not be for you. It's supposed yeah. to be just a badass trailer. Like, yeah. There's no other purpose for it. It's just an over the top tube chassis trailer, and. Uh, so uh, people talked a lot on it, but what was funny is, is like all the banter and all that stuff, it like increased our website activity and our sales just from people talking about our trailer. So it was, it was pretty nuts. And, and now we have a, a 23 foot three inch DOM version that we're going to build. And hopefully that creates some, uh, some, some banter and yeah. angry talk about yeah. that. Um, but we're going to offer them, our plan is to offer them welded. And that's a whole new kind of entity in itself that we're working on. And then we're going, uh, Spec truck racing, maybe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so the the long term plan is we've been designing this uh, this sixty one hundred truck for like I think it's been like three years. It's way too long, but we're working on it. And uh, we've been collecting parts over the years. And we're like, you know what? Like 
let's just build it. Be cool. Like it's and, either. I mean, you've been so successful at the UTV side of racing. <laughs> yeah, um, and we and we. Um, I don't know if we have the budget to be e- extremely. Um, like race everything in the 6100, but we definitely want to give it a shot and do a couple races on it and show our name and and show that uh, you know we we're serious that our products we we use them and uh, we're we're talking about hopefully trying to get X travel on the front of that thing, which would be pretty cool. So there's there's a chance of doing that. Um, so just kind of use what we use what we sell as is kind of our plan and and uh, so yeah, I mean that that's a, a big thing for us that we're working on and, and it'll probably become a development over the next year as we start to build it slowly but surely. So but lots of lots of new product, um, lots of new product plan, like so much product that we've designed so much stuff and we've proofed it out with prototypes and we are literally just trying to make sure everything is a hundred percent hundred percent perfected before we go into production. Um, like our doors. Uh, doors have been huge for us in the UTV world. Uh, we made we'd make one, two sets, put them on people's car. I think when we did our first door set, the X3 two door, we sent them to like three different people, and we were like, "Hey, these are free doors. Just tell us how the heck they fit. Like, give us the real feedback." And everyone was like, "Thumbs up." So we were like, "Okay, it's time." We made fifty sets of them right off the bat, and uh, that was a, a door that picked up really quick traction, um, having that like fighter jet style door and. Um, so now we got them in stock. So that's like our big thing moving into this building is like we have inventory on the shelf and that's what sells. And we've learned a lot from that. So our, our goal with this podcast situation is uh, not to talk about LSK. Obviously, this one is. But um, our our industry doesn't have a very, you know, centralized podcast where, where you know, we can bring influential people in and talk about, you know, whatever i mean it, it, we we want to be able to bring anybody on here we want to bring uh and competitors on here we want to bring uh people from just all all sorts of however anybody's involved in in this industry we want to be able to talk to them uh network with them um so if if you're i mean if you're willing if, if you're willing to come on here uh no matter who's listening to this you know reach out to doug and and maybe we, we could uh get you scheduled in I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the the podcast is really just a way to just not just say, "Hey, it's just us," um, but we know, you know, our competitors are, and like he said, and um, you know, who we're who we're up against and who we're who we're working with um, out there, and you know, we like to collaborate with people. We're not viewing people as as our competition, but as essentially just you know a challenge to you know make sure we fit our products into the right part of the puzzle in the off-road industry. Well, with, with Cal West, we have a unique ability. I mean, we have so many clients. Yeah. It's, I, we're, we're probably the best networked off-road company. I mean. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're making products for 80-plus uh, different companies. And uh, with great, I mean, we have a really good relationship with a lot, of, most of our clients. And it's the same people we've been working with for years. Um, we're really good about um, just making, you know, good network and, and being a, uh, you know, really good to our customers. And, and, uh, so we want to just expand that network through this and, you know, reach out to people that we haven't had to work with too. And, and also, you know, get them on here and let them talk about and showcase their product because it sometimes it's really hard to find out who makes what. And it, and even when I'm looking at, you know, a new item, um, you know, for example, on a UTV, like a hot topic is, UTV axles like there's a bunch of different ones it'd be cool to just have them all sit in the room and argue with each other you know I think the last <laughs> the last like six lunches have been you talking about UTV, s- axles, yeah, UTV yeah. axles yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> it would be cool to be like hey what like if if you had someone here be like what makes your product great like that's what we're getting at like it's it's not this isn't just about us this is this is just like the industry as a whole and like the hot topics that people are constantly talking about you know we want to nail them down and and have a resource for information so yeah it's it's cool but as far as like future goals, um, you know, of the company, like we want to keep growing, like we're we're hungry and we want to, you know, um, keep making a better and better and better product and improve everything we can, become more efficient and offer more of the industry, more options. And then just just the ability to keep things in stock. Like that's our number one goal is like make it so someone could call us and we could ship it out the same day or next day. Like we realize the value in that. And sometimes it's really hard. Um, but we're, we're pushing for that and that's, that's where we're headed. And, um, as far as like growth goes, you know, you know, the growth goes behind that, you know, we make a good pro if we make a good product, 
which we do and we and we strive to do and we have stuff in stock, then the growth will come behind it. And that really goes for any business, not just us. Um, but we're, we're really excited um, about everything that's happened over the last 11 years. That was a really short snippet of, of all the craziness in between. But um, we are, uh, um, you know, really uh, fortunate for everything that's happened. And uh, we've had our lows, we've had our highs. And just at the end of the day, we've had just an awesome client base and a lot of people that really believe in us. And I think that's what dro- drove us to where we are now. And also a lot of great people working for us, too. Yeah, yeah. Honest, honestly, the, at this moment, that like, if we went through the shop, there is everyone has their key role and everyone kills it. There's not a single person in this building that doesn't is not on their game. Like it is amazing how awesome everyone is about their job and how much they care about it. Like that matters. The 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 environment, like going into work and people being happy and having direction and like and enjoying what they do, like that makes a big difference because we're here a lot <laughs> and and uh, we want to have good culture and that's and that's what we do. Um, but you know we appreciate you guys listening to us and uh, if you have anyone that you um, would recommend uh, seeing on on this podcast, you know let us know, uh, drop us a comment below, uh, make sure to subscribe to us and uh, we'll see you guys next time.